a lot of people spent the last weekend having a lot of fun and a lot of time together with their family during Easter. I spent it watching Chris Lilly's new series, Lunatics, and I regret it extensively. The new series basically follows a similar formula to Lily's other series. They are mockumentary, fly-on-the-wall style comedies. They usually revolve around six characters who ultimately, while very, very flawed in some way, unfortunately, usually physically impaired or emotionally stagnant, that kind of stuff wears off after many years. I feel like Lunatics is definitely the weakest of his work, completely ignoring the controversial and obviously racist tones of his earlier work, including his characters in We Can Be Heroes, all the way up to Angry Boys with S Mouse, which most people are more than aware of. Over the span of the 10 episodes, we follow Chris Lilly playing Keith, Becky, Gavin, Jana, and Quinton, and Joyce. And while there is some humour to be had with the setups that they give in the pilot episode, I started to give up very early. I did watch all of the episodes over the weekend, and ultimately, I have to say it's not worth it. Despite the fact that there are very distinct and new characters he is tackling, there's a lot of old material that he's treading over and over again. He's several characters who are overly sexualized and ultimately don't do anything thing with that over-sexualization, nor are they demonized for it. Even when you have a character like Gavin, who is a perfect example of the new age of um, men who are raised on YouTube and pornography, then they don't really do much commentary for it. Basically, he becomes like a fish out of water character, he's brought over to England, and then obviously hilarity ensues. It's very similar to a lot of Sacha Baron Cohen's film work, outside of obviously Borat and Bruno. It's childish and very, very uncomfortable to watch, and I guess that is the kind of thing that Lily is trying to get us to feel, but it's not uncomfortable in a fun or enjoyable way or something that you'd want to share with people. It's just uncomfortable because it's just not that funny. And look, I mean, obviously comedy is very subjective, and there will be a lot of people who really enjoy Lily's new series. I have no doubt about that. But I've seen a lot of this stuff before, not just by other comedians, but also by Lily himself. His character of Yana basically having a character who is completely ignorant of their excessive lifestyle and the way that she emotionally manipulates the people around her was covered a lot better over a decade ago in We Can Be Heroes with a character of Phil Olivetti and also even characters like Quentin and Gavin who ultimately lead to these insights or what they believe to be insights in the world. Again, it's reflections of characters that Chris kind of nailed like over a decade ago and maybe you should let other comedians or other performers, you know, do those characters. It's kind of a weird insight into Lily's frame of mind when you have these characters who are complete egotists but he can't seem to find that in himself in his own creative process. I guess because it would be under the guise of satire, which I mean, a lot of his work is, but there are a lot of uncomfortable things that we have to look at, and I don't think Lily himself has had time to look at, despite the fact that it's been several years since his last series. Even with the fact that Chris is a renowned name both here and obviously internationally, it's been about five years since Jonah from Tonga came out, and obviously he is a multi-award winning comedian, he has done so much and has obviously helped put Australia on the stage for comedy, but it's difficult to talk about. It's difficult to give an honest answer to whether or not you find something funny because some people obviously think that it's a bit racist or it's a little bit uncomfortable to think about and to look over. Whether he's done yellow face or black face or he's portrayed characters who have physical disabilities which are reflective of real things that real people experience. It's not something that I personally can speak to. I'm very white and obviously I looked up to Lily a lot when I was younger and I was thinking of doing comedy in my life. But now being 28 and you know Chris Lily himself being 44 it might be time for him to I guess rewrite or rethink a lot of these characters because it just doesn't work anymore for a whole range of reasons not just based on the content that he writes but there's so much he could have done with these characters even with the way that he portrays them in the pilot episode that I was very disappointed about nine episodes in that hadn't really had a satisfying payoff. Usually the structure of Lily's show really has a setup within the first two, three episodes. I mean, Crisis, that obviously bleeds over the next following couple of episodes. It's something that the main character is looking forward to. Then usually there's like a heartbreaking shift within the ninth episode, very similar to that of shows like Bojack Horseman. And then obviously at the end of the season, you have like an emotionally distraught character who eventually has to pay the price for their terrible behavior. As the Lily series went on, that formula kind of faded. And I really missed it because the characters that he creates are 
very bad people. The problem is, is that sometimes they don't have any emotional weight to them, nor do they have any consequences when the characters around them basically act like awkward NPCs that are just filling in dialogue that is expected of them because they're awkward NPCs rather than actual characters that Lily himself has fleshed out. I don't see this show in any kind of comedic light. In fact, I, I watched Tag uh, between some of the episodes because I hadn't seen it before and I was really on a Jake Johnson vibe and I laughed more of those 100 minutes than I did over the four to five hours that I watched Lunatics. And now look, this is a first impression. I might go back in a year and I hope I don't have to because I didn't really enjoy it the first time around and I might watch it again. But at the moment, it's not looking good. I imagine the first couple series that Lily tried to do were done on shoestring budgets, much to the triggering of obviously the Australian public. But when he is giving more reign and more creative freedom, and this is what he does with it, it's embarrassing. It's kind of weird because we as a nation, as in Australians, really found it funny. We thought it was one of the funniest things that we have ever produced and may ever produce. His series, We Can Be Heroes, introduced us to Darren and Nathan Sims, and of course, bitchy student, Jamae King. But that kind of didn't age well. I did spend some time before the series launched on Netflix to watch some of the older series. Like, We Can Be Heroes is a lot darker, and actually deals more with a Ricky Gervais style of cringe comedy that is more focused on the characters and how terrible they are as people, rather than focusing on the attributes that would make them funny. The issue is that we find a lot of the humour doesn't date so well, and especially with more recent Australian shows such as Please Like Me, Utopia, and of course The Incredible Rosehaven, that this kind of stuff doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work from a technical standpoint. For example, the mockumentary style kind of had its time in the sun in the late 2000s with shows like The Office and Arrested Development, and that kind of stuff has fallen out of favour. I can't think of a recent mockumentary series that really made me laugh as hard as those series, excluding Nirvana the band the show, but even then they layer on the mockumentary style as just another form of of comedy that they can bring out of the characters and the situations. It's difficult to watch Chris Lilly's show with an honest view on where we are in 2019 as someone who really doesn't like to talk about how woke they are or even how woke they think they are. I'm definitely not woke. Let's just let's just stay let's just take that out of the equation completely. I'm a straight white male. I used to do stand-up comedy and I'm very very not good at it. And now I make YouTube videos because I think that is a much more structured and more important way to get our ideas and concepts that I want to bring to the table. The problem with actually doing comedy in 2019 is obviously you have to be a lot more careful with a global audience. If you are making certain things for certain people, you can kind of find that audience, but obviously once it reaches a grander scale, it makes it a lot more difficult to share and to actually have those ideas and things that are made funny without any extra analysis. I think that is what was happening with a lot of earlier Chris Lilly work. There is a lot in his earlier series, such as Summer Heights High and We Can Be Heroes, that can be adapted and affected on. For example, his character Phil, who is a terrible person taking advantage of an early viral success, turns out to be a terrible father, a terrible husband, and just a straight up terrible person. And... That kind of character formula hasn't been repeated without having some kind of emotional consequences. For example, Jonah from Tonga, which in itself is blackface, does deal with a character who is, while emotionally insecure and unstable, also has a terrible home life and so you feel sorry for him. And it actually has been repeated with some of the other characters in other Chris Lilly series. And I think that that is in itself a flaw of Chris Lilly series. Rather than letting a show like this play out its characters and make sure that they are aware of how terrible they are, it's more just trying to create a catchphrase or trying to create something that is forcefully iconic rather than letting it naturally be. In the early 2000s, Australia had a renaissance of comedy, whether it was Skit House or Double the Fist or even the award-winning Captain Kim. Captain Kim worked because it was a parody of what was essentially middle-class culture at the time, whether it was looking through a lens of cultural cringe that even now kind of still holds up. A lot of the episodes for international viewers are on YouTube, and obviously it's on Netflix in the United Kingdom, but in Australia, we kind of don't have a legal way to watch it, and that kind of sucks. But it actually shows some great examples of how to do satire, not be offensive, and actually be really, really funny and hold up even over a decade after the show is finished. Lunatics doesn't hold up even four days after its release. 
it feels as though Lily spent way too much time trying to craft these characters' absurd behaviours rather than actually having some sort of comedic payoff. There are some things in the pilot episode that I thought were going to be paid off by the end of the series and none of it came to fruition. It's kind of annoying when you have an auteur who is in control of not only the main actors, the writing and directing, have so much free reign and do so little with it. I initially had these kind of issues with his previous series Angry Boys, which was a co-production with HBO. Having Netflix on board kind of felt like a no-brainer, and obviously his other series have done well internationally, especially Jemay, Private School Girl. The problem is, is that it's a it's too much spread too thin. Some of these characters could have been absolutely hilarious, and I would have had no issue if it was somebody like Keith who maybe gets caught up in the Me Too era of his sexual disorder, or even just breaking down because of his religious upbringing and maybe a marriage that he's not comfortable in. In fact, if you have a look at his previous characters like Mr. G, despite being characters who were at least somewhat progressive based on their characterization, were actually emotionally manipulative and actually terrible towards the people around them, and would have been fantastic to bring back in a series like this. There are so many things wrong with Chris Lilly's Lunatics and it's it's hard to see a man who we once looked up to fall so far from grace. Obviously there are literally dozens of think pieces about it and why we should just completely ignore it because of his terrible, terrible characters in the past. I think we should give this one a chance just to let it stand on its own feet simply because it's a terrible show. It's a completely unfunny show. In fact, Luke Buckmeister basically pointed out a lot of this stuff a lot better and a lot earlier than I was able to record this because I was busy hanging out with my family on Easter Sunday. What I'm saying is, hey, look, if you kind of like Chris Lilly, maybe give the show a chance, but overall, I wouldn't. There are a lot of other better shows, funnier people, and a lot more better things to consume on Netflix right now. But give a chance to, say, the comedy of Rosehaven, or Utopia, or even if you're looking at stuff online, just have a look at somebody like Gus Johnson, or Drew Gooden, uh, or even the Free Band Boys, who are doing absolutely fantastic work. It's... yeah. It, look, Lunatics is not good. It's it's not good at all. And I, I give it, like, I give it, like, one star. Look, it has, like, I we can't, well, I'm gonna try and get, well, I'll give it two stars. There's a lot of production value, and actually there's a lot of funnier moments that are brought out out of the secondary characters rather than Lily himself. The shame is, is that it, there's just so little done here. So, yeah. Don't watch Lunatics. There, there, there's a lot of, uh, look, I can literally do, hang on, here we go. Look, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do right now. Hang on. Here, look, I'm gonna do, like, a super quick search of, like, Netflix right now. So if you go to Netflix, uh, Australia, um, obviously this is what's gonna come up. There's my uh, sort of thing, and t- oh, God, it's right there. Oh, God. Again, there are way better comedies that are on Netflix right now. For example, Someone Great is fantastic. Patriot Act is a hilarious show that is almost like a counteract to Last Week Tonight. Uh, The Good Place is a brilliant sci-fi comedy that really really leans more on the comedy rather than the sci-fi. Again, so much more enjoyable stuff. James A. Caster, Daniel Sloss, Cal Wilson, so many other more amazing and more interesting people and funnier stuff that you could watch and spend your time with. Don't watch Grensby. Definitely don't watch The Unicorn Store. Tag is brilliant. I watched that this weekend as well. I had more fun with Tag I had more fun with the 100 minutes of tag than I did with the three hours that I watched of Lunatics. So, anyway, uh, I, I guess enjoy that. There are some recommendations. Don't watch Lunatics. Watch something funny. Spend time with your family. That's what I did today. I'm exhausted and I'm a little bit bummed out and a little bit sick. I don't know if you can hear that in my voice, but man, it was better than watching Lunatics. Be good to each other. I'm Harrison by the stream. Good luck streaming.